ipakita ang tunay na estado ng ating bansa. Ilahad ang mga pinakabagong balita at pangyayari sa ating bayan. Ipaalam sa taong bayan ang katotohanan at ipaliwanag ang mga hakbang na ginagawa ng pamahalaan upang manatiling payapa at maiangat ang pamumuhay ng bawat Pilipino. Mula sa Pangulo ng Republika ng Pilipinas, Mayor Rodrigo Roa Duterte, ito ang Talk to the People. So we begin with, uh, uh, can you give your report, joint presentation of the Economic Development Center. Uh, I'll give this to first to Secretary Dominguez, then to Secretary to Sunny, you yeah, have the floor. You. President Rodrigo Roa Duterte, distinguished members of the cabinet, uh, well, good evening. Uh, I would like to start by saying that the conflict between Russia and Ukraine does not involve us directly. However, uh, because neither Russia nor Ukraine is a major trading partner of ours. Instead, the Philippine economy will likely be collateral damage. It is as if we are hit by a ricocheting bullet. These indirect shocks are likely to be felt through more four major channels. Uh, is there a slide? Uh, yeah, four, four major channels. The commodity market, the financial market, investments, and the impact on our fiscal health. First, oil and food prices are expected to go up as Russia is the largest exporter of natural gas and wheat, uh, trigo, okay. while Ukraine is the fourth largest exporter of corn. As the conflict continues, Ukraine and Russia's main trading partners, predominantly the European Union, we look to trade with other countries such as U.S. and China where we are buying uh, both uh, wheat and corn, thereby pushing up the prices of commodities in these markets as well. Second, the conflict will also likely cause a surge in interest rates or cost of borrowing, which was already expected to go up even prior to the crisis because of the U.S. Fed's tightening monetary policies. The conflict will increase the perception of risk in investments. Third, investments are likely to decline or at least be uh, on hold in the face of uncertainty, which may cause investors from the West to be more conservative or postpone their plan in planned investments. Once sanctions are in imposed, it will take a long time for investor and consumer confidence to return to normal. Lastly, all the aforesaid economic impacts will likely require government support to protect our vulnerable citizens and the critical sectors most affected by the crisis, and this will stretch our budget even further. However, I would like to emphasize that we do not expect this crisis to last very long. However, there may, may be some linger in, lingering effects. We have, had, we have seen similar crises in the past, such as the Gulf War in 1990, uh, the Asian financial crisis in 1997, the oil price shock of uh, 2008, and also the first Russia-Ukraine conflict in 2014, and we have weathered all of this crisis very well. We have experienced crises whose effects were more severe and direct to the economy, such as the Asian financial crisis in 1997 and the global financial crisis in 2008. 
this crisis lasted lo much longer, and yet we were able to get through them. Based on these experiences, we are confident that we have the tools and the preparation necessary to help our people through this crisis. The following presentation of Secretary Chua will outline the economic development cluster's recommendations to address these potential shocks. This crisis may increase prices across several sectors and thereby cause our inflation rate to breach our target. But with the measures that we discussed at the economic development cluster and which will sec Secretary Chua will present, we are confident that we will be able to keep the inflation within our target range of 2 to 4% and maintain our growth path of 7 to 9% this year. So can I ask Carl to go through the details? Okay, thank, thank you. you very much, Secretary Dominguez. Uh, good evening, Mr. President and members of the Cabinet. The Economic Development Cluster of Cabinet met this afternoon and we are proposing 14 measures to alleviate the impact of the crisis on the people. So let me go through each of the 14 items. The first is on the overall economy is to shift to alert level one at the soonest possible time for the entire country and open all the schools for face-to-face -face learning to increase our domestic economy and offset the external risk. So while we cannot uh, prevent the risk from coming from the global uh, perspective, we can strengthen our domestic economy to provide the people with more jobs and opportunities. The second one on gasoline and diesel, as you know, the price of gasoline and diesel has went up so much. No? So we are proposing the following interventions. The first is to increase fuel subsidy program for public utility vehicles from the already announced 2.5 billion to 5 billion. So we will double the subsidy. And the first tranche will be given in March and the second tranche in April. Number two is to continue working with the private firms on promotional discount of oil companies up to one to four peso per liter discount. So this will help alleviate additional uh, for the jeepneys and the other PUVs. Number three is to increase our buffer stock of uh, petroleum from the current 30 to 45 days. Uh, this will require a law that we can work with Congress. The fourth is to provide additional fuel vouchers for agricultural producers. And we will increase the budget from 500 million to 1.1 billion. The first tranche we will give in March, the second tranche in April. And by that time, we will have additional revenues to fund these uh, subsidies. Going further, number five is to promote energy conservation everywhere in the private sector or in government offices. Number six is to suspend or remove the pass-through fees that are being charged by LGUs, industrial parks, or subdivisions for deliveries, for truckings, and so on. Number seven is to fully implement the service contracting, uh, the subsidy that we give to, for instance, the buses to operate and to expand it to all public transport routes. Number eight is to promote e-vehicles and expand access to charging stations. And number nine is to aggressively promote active transport, uh, including bicycles. Now, uh, many people are using LPG or liquefied petroleum gas. What we propose is to increase our buffer stock from the current seven to 15 days. So when we expand the buffer stock, we can ensure more adequate supply and meet demand in case there is a global shortage. And this will require a new law. The next one is on coal. We use coal to power, I think, half of our power generation. And we propose to expand supply and reduce price as a result by reducing the most favored nation or MFN tariff rate, which is currently 7% to zero uh, temporarily until December 2022. So the effect people will feel is a pass-through of lower power charges and to maintain our buffer stock at the current 30 days minimum because we have sufficient inventory. Let me now go to the fifth recommendation for electricity. We propose as uh, gasoline and diesel alike to promote energy conservation 
including the use of sensor technology for energy saving. So once we are, for instance, overlighted, we can cut down the use of light. The next is to stagger the increase in generation charge. And I understand the oil, uh, power companies have agreed to this uh, in the report of Secretary Pusi. And then number three and four is to allow foreign ownership in microgrid, solar, wind, and tidal energy. Uh, this would require revision of the IRR. This will allow more players to come in and to uh, uh, offset our need for more coal, which is already three or four times more expensive. And now let me go to the food side. Number six is our support to the overall agriculture sector because one of the transmission, apart from energy, Mr. President, is the food. So we will implement vigorously the plant, plant, plant program part two, subject to the availability of funds and provide targeted fertilizer vouchers to farmers and to discuss with our bilateral partners uh, on possible additional supply of fertilizers, uh, which is needed for production in agriculture. Let me now go to number seven, which is rice. Uh, the Department of Agriculture has agreed to closely monitor rice inflation and the National Food Authority to closely monitor the buffer stock. We will also help the local government units increase their buffer stock so to ensure we have adequate supply in each province. And the Land Bank of the Philippines, LBP, and the Development Bank of the Philippines will provide concessional loans or uh, funding for working capital, particularly in the procurement of post-harvest facilities and warehouses. We will also accelerate the Rice Competitiveness Enhancement Fund implementation and other parts of the National Rice Program in the budget so that we increase local production. Now, uh, should the local production not be enough, well, we will temporarily import uh, to keep prices low and make sure we have adequate rice for all Filipinos. So we propose to facilitate the continuous release of the sanitary and phytosanitary import clearances, especially for the shipment that will arrive in the lean season of July. Kasi yung gitna ng April and August, is the, uh, October rather, is the lean season while waiting for the harvest. We may need more import. And we propose to expand supply and reduce price by extending the 35% tariff rate until December 2022. Uh, Mr. President, you have issued an executive order for this, uh, but it will expire in June so that we maintain a good supply of rice and uh, keep the prices low. We propose its uh, extension. Let me now go to number eight on corn. Corn is important as feed for poultry, for livestock. Uh, so we propose to expand supply and reduce the price by lowering the most favored nation tariff rate to 5% in quota and 15% out quota and allow a minimum access volume uh, where they can avail of the lower tariff rate of 4 million metric ton until the end of the year. So this is temporary to ensure that we have adequate feed so that we can buy chicken and pork uh, in, ch in a cheaper price. And we will import more feed wheat and produce more cassava because these are substitutes for feeds, for chicken and for uh, pigs, for instance. Number nine on pork, uh, we still have a, uh, the African swine fever, but we are slowly recovering. We propose that uh, to ensure a lower price of pork and adequate supply, we extend the lower tariff rate of 15% in quota and 25% out quota with a MAV or minimum access volume of 200 metric ton until December 2022. Uh, presently, Mr. President, my EO tayo until May, uh, but we deem it is necessary to extend this to ensure lower price for the people and adequate supply. We also propose to accelerate the release of imported pork from the cold storage. So marami pong na import na pork, but we have to release it for the people's uh, consumption, especially outside NCR. Uh, we propose also to pass the livestock and dairy bill now pending in the Senate kasi ito yung tutulong talaga sa hog raisers and to increase our dairy production. And finally, to remove all the non-tariff barriers uh, that prevent the smooth or proper in importation of pork. Uh, number 10 is on fish. We have a big uh, shortage of fish. 
So we propose the issuance of a CNI or a certificate for the necessity to import uh, small pelagic fish from the ocean, tulad ng galunggong, uh, from the second quarter to the fourth quarter. Our estimate is uh, we need it to fill an additional 140,000 metric ton because we have a supply gap of 200,000 metric tons. So yung na-release na import allocation is 60,000. So we need to increase this. So the end result is uh, adequate supply so that the people can have lower price for fish and also to remove all other non-tariff barriers. Let me now go to number 11 on chicken. Uh, we propose, we bilisan natin, accelerate the release of the sanitary and phytosanitary clearances from the National Meat Inspection Service, cold storage warehouses, so that we can increase yung inventory and supply. Kasi uh, hindi pa tayo umaabot sa pre-COVID-19 pandemic level. So mayroon pa tayong shortage sa uh, chicken. Uh, and the people who eat chicken, uh, for instance, chicken joy, na feel nila tong uh, crunch and the higher price. Number 12 po sa sugar, we have to address a court temporary restraining order that prevent us from pursuing yung sugar import natin. And the economic team has uh, proposed that we allow direct importation by the industrial users, yung mga, yung mga food manufacturers, beverage manufacturer, on a one-to-one -one ratio. So they will buy 50% from the domestic to help our farmers, pero kulang po yan, so we have to import the uh, extra that is needed so that we can uh, help our food uh, producers also. Number 13 on wheat, now this is uh, needed for bread production, for pasta, spaghetti, uh, is to expand our sources of wheat and India is offering to provide, uh, for instance, uh, an additional supply of wheat. Uh, we have a project, yung Pinoy Tasty Project, so that we promote and buy local bread, na masarap naman, and we promote non-wheat flour substitute, flour substitute, such as yung sagip nutri flour, nagawa sa cassava, sweet potato, mongo, and banana flour. Uh, all of these uh, are meant to ensure that we have adequate bread at affordable prices. And uh, finally, Mr. President, since itong uh, renewable energy and agriculture napakahalaga uh, sa atin, we propose that we include it in the strategic investment priority plan under the board of investment para mabigyan ng sapat na attention may investors na pumasok para i-increase yung supply ng ating uh, pagkain at yung energy. So Mr. President, this is the recommendation of the economic development cluster to alleviate the impact of the Russia-Ukraine crisis on the people, notably yung pagtaas ng presyo ng pagkain Oriente, gasolina, at diesel. Uh, yan lang po. Maraming salamat. Carl, given the time that uh, we are here uh, for, the, for the time being, uh, I'd like to know if, uh, if we could come up uh, immediately with the uh, enabling law uh, sa recommendations mo. Uh, Mr. President, in terms of the subsidies, no, we have it already in the budget, so we will implement it immediately. In terms of the tariff reduction, po, since Congress is not in session, uh, we will submit a request for the issuance of an executive order. And there are dalawa lang po na kailangan ng batas. We will prepare it immediately so that Congress can consider it immediately when they return uh, in May for a session. Yes, uh, we will work hard on this. Thank you. Uh, we have a long haul sa uh, uh, walang trabaho. There is that uh, Congress is not functioning. Uh, I wonder if we can have that uh, uh, the, the laws uh, that you want to uh, be enacted to support your recommendation. Yun lang ang ano ko doon. Uh, given the time that we, uh, that we are that we stay here, that we can act on it uh, on our own. Baka lalampas na sa kabila. And I just hope that they would, you know, read your uh, study very carefully. Mr. President, if the situation escalates, uh, we could recommend a special session if mag-escalate po. Mas mabuti pa siya, okay? 
Pag-isipan na lang natin yan. Uh, bingbong siguro. Well. Tignan mo daw mo para mapaisa natin. Para, alam mo, uh, so there's gonna be an election. At after that, there will be euphoria. Then nobody's really uh, focusing on anything except yung pagpalit ng tao, kung ano, reorganization dito, changing of the guards. So that would eat a lot of time. And itong, itong recommendations ng NEDA is really uh, vital to, the, to keep the economy humming uh, for, uh, for a few months. More so that there is, uh, I think, uh, baski na mahinto ito, the fractured economies already in Europe uh, would affect us more or less uh, by next year. Nandiyan na yan. Hindi nga eh. Towards the end of the year. So, prangka-prangkahan na lang natin yung Congress. Uh, this is intended uh, really for the welfare of the people. If you have the time, sit with us and we can discuss that. Otherwise, uh, you're on your own. Uh, hindi ibaliwala ninyo itong pinag-aralan na ng, na ng outgoing administration. So, salamat. Uh, is that all? That would be all. Uh, uh, salamat. Uh, we can, if you approve, Mr. President, we can. Uh, uh, Secretary Kose. Uh, uh, Chua, uh, Kose, yeah. Na, uh, nasam nasama na mayor yung uh, report namin sa economic class. Ah, uh, sabay-sabay na yun. Sabay-sabay na po, uh, pati agriculture. Uh, all the, uh, and, uh, then we have the, the critical uh, uh, Anong contribution of uh, Secretary Duque? Good evening, uh, Mr. President. Yes. And uh, E.S. Medial Daya, Senator Bongo, and uh, fellow members of the cabinet. At higit po sa lahat ang ating po mga uh, minamahal na kababayan. Magandang gabi po. At uh, muli ako po ay uh, mag-uulat. Uh, ukol sa pinakabagong uh, updates uh, sa ating pong COVID response. At uh, yan po ang uh, first slide natin para uh, sa ating pong usual COVID uh, updates. Uh, gaya ng amin na iulat, ang, uh, tayo po ay magbibigay na mula ngayon araw ng weekly updates na lamang po, Mr. President. Hindi na po daily uh, reporting of uh, case counts. At para po sa linggo ng uh, Marso, Uh, ng March 1 to 7, uh, ngayong taon may naidagdag na 6,207 na bagong kaso o katumbas po nito ay uh, 899 daily average cases at mas mababa po ito ng uh, 31% kumpara sa naitalang kaso para sa February 22 to 28 na 9,148 cases at meron po 1,306 uh, daily average cases. At sa 6,297 na karagdagan kaso sa linggong ito, yung pong 1,479 ay mula sa NCR, 836 sa Region 4A at 775 sa Region 6. Tatlo naman po ang nailagdag na severe and critical cases sa talaan habang 615 ang bilang ng mga karagdagan verified deaths para sa linggong ito. Ang current cumulative case fatality rate ay nasa 1.56%. Mababa po kumpara sa global fatality rate ng 2.04%. Ang ating pong recoveries ay umabot naman sa 9,954 para sa linggong ito at sa kabuuan 98.7% ang cumulative recovery rate ng bansa. Patuloy po na bumababa ang ating national utilization rates na nasa 18% para sa non-ICU bed utilization rate at 26% naman para sa ICU beds. Out of the 6,572 total admissions at the national level, 16.1% lamang ng mga ito ay severe at critical admissions. At panghuli, ang ating pong national 7-day moving average positivity rate 
ay uh, bumaba at ito po yung kasalukuyan 4.2% dito February 28 to March 6 habang ang ating pong daily RT-PCR testing output ay kasalukuyang nasa 24,219 tests kada araw. E lahat po itong mga metrics na ito ay patuloy na bumababa, Mr. President. And the uh, next slide, ma ito lamang po ang ating uh, national uh, epi-curve na kung saan na uh, muli magpapakita ng pagbaba ng ating po mga kaso. Uh, kung saan gaya ng naunang nabanggit, Meron po tayong 900 more or less average daily cases ayon sa onset ng symptoms ng atin na itala noong March 1 to 7. At mas mababa po ito ng uh, mga 30% sa ating average 1,306 cases noong po February 22 to 28. Sa NCR naman, mayroong 211 average daily cases ayon sa onset ng symptoms at mas mababa po ng 26% kumpara sa atin average noong Uh, 286 noong February 22 to 28. Ang mababa ang trend ng mga kaso ay makikita rin po sa uh, uh, the rest of uh, Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. Itong next slide, maganda po ito. Mapakita kung ano po ang atin estado kumpara naman sa mga ibang uh, bansa ng uh, uh, Southeast Asia. Next slide. Ito, Mr. President, makikita rito. Yung uh, Philippines... Tayo po ang meron ng pinakamababa ng uh, uh, pagdating po sa daily new confirmed COVID-19 cases per million people as of 8.82 na lang po tayo. Samantalang tingnan nyo po, uh, naglipara na Singapore ay uh, 3,000 plus per million population. Ang Vietnam naman, uh, 1,300 thereabouts. Malaysia, 845. Tayo na po ang pinakamababa dito sa slide na ito makikita. At uh, syempre naman po, uh, Mr. President, pinagdadasal din natin na yung mga kaso ng mga bansang ito ay bumaba rin for uh, regional uh, security natin, health security. At uh, yan po ang uh, uh, makikita natin, Mr. President, na maayos po yung atin na uh, pangangasiwa. Nagpapasalamat po tayo sa lahat po ng mga tumulong uh, sa inyo pong uh, leadership. at ng inyo pong uh, IATF ay uh, maganda po ang uh, ating mga numero at uh, patuloy na uh, bumababa. At uh, yeah, gano'n pa man, uh, tayo po ay mas handa na na tumugon kung sakasakaling nako the wood, Mr. President, wag na sanang tumaas pa ulit ang ating mga kaso. Uh, uh, sir. Uh, yes, Mr. President. Maybe ito nung lang. I'd like to I'd like to know what brought the numbers down for us. Uh, there are two sources of protection, Mr. President. Yung atin vaccination was the game changer above all. Well, okay. no, vaccination, uh -huh. no doubt, uh, these countries can uh, well afford to have it. Aba oh, din naman yung kanilang kaso. Kasi nauna lang naman tayo na nag uh, spike uh, nung January. And then uh, our cases started to go to go down uh, until today. In fact, our reported cases for today uh, are 700 plus na lang. This is the fifth straight day that we have reported below 1,000 cases per day. So the next reason, Mr. President, is the uh, protection from natural uh, uh, infection, yung natural immunity. Tandaan niyo, Mr. President, we have had about five surges already. including the most recent, which is Omicron. And uh, this uh, means marami na rin pong na-infect na ating pong mga kababayan. But uh, uh, luckily, karamihan naman po na infection natin mild. Yung iba nga is symptomatic. Uh, symptomatic. And both, in fact, account for about uh, 92 to 94% of all uh, our uh, cases. Kasi in terms of resources, money, uh, we cannot e even have to uh, what Singapore has. Pero makita mo, disiplinado rin yung there, a disciplined uh, society. I mean, uh, more or less uh, better than the others, including the Philippines. Uh, everybody knows that. Uh, Malaysia... Uh, Never mind about Vietnam because wala masyado tayong grasp sa ano nila. 
Itataka ako, bakit ang Pilipinas na pinakababa? Sir, ang isang differentiator natin compared to uh, many of these countries, I uh, should like to believe, is our very good compliance to minimum public health standards, yung masking ng mga Pilipino. Yeah. Sumusunod talaga, uh, Mr. President. Hindi well, katulad ng mga iba, ay uh, medyo talagang, uh, lalo na nung mataas na yung mga vaccination rates nila, they just threw uh, caution to the wind. wind. Uh -huh. And so I think that is one uh, distinct uh, uh, difference that uh, we have manifested compared to uh, other uh, countries in uh, Southeast Asia. In fact, uh, sa, kung sa Amerika nga, titignan niyo sir, grabe, ang death nila, one million compared naman. Ayun, pinakamayaman na. The most powerful militarily. And in terms of science, research and development, they're superior. By and large, wala po tayong kalaban-laban. But Kaya, tayo naman, ang uh, hawa ng Diyos, ang ating uh, uh, mortality rate ay uh, mababa as a 1.5%, uh, which is much lower than the global average of about 2.04%. And not only that, Mr. President, yung uh, atin pong uh, mga kaso ay uh, sa kumpara sa Amerika at uh, even the uh, Western Europe, no? Ang taas ng kanilang hmm. case load, ang taas ng kanilang uh, uh, deaths. Hmm. Oh, hanggang ngayon, mataas pa rin, Mr. President. And so far, tayo naman, tingin ko maganda po yung uh, inyong leadership, yung pong uh, weekly uh, rem reminders to the public and they have seen consistency in uh, your uh, uh, reminders and they are appreciative by way of a more disciplined compliance with our minimum public health standards. So ito po yung masking, yung lagi niyo pong paulit-ulit na sinasabi, yung ating po, uh, physical distancing, hand hygiene, uh, and uh, all other uh, non-pharmaceutical interventions, Mr. President. So I think this really uh, 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 makes a, a huge difference uh, compared to uh, the other countries. But uh, confidently, the other countries in Southeast Asia, kahit na nagpipig silang ganon, bababa din po yan. And I think, para po sa lahat, ang concept of new normal will be the uh, realization that the virus will be here to stay and we must live with the virus. That's the philosophical underpinning that uh, we will have to uh, 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 realize uh, when we usher in the new normal. Ngayon po, as alert level 1 na tayo, hopefully once the IATF uh, defines more definitively the alert level 0, uh, what uh, uh, does it uh, consist of? Uh, by and large, yung pa rin po ang uh, atin uh, overarching consideration. The virus will uh, be here to stay, but we will manage. And uh, we have uh, already tested. Uh, meron na tayong uh, acid test or litmus test in uh, the past surges. No? Delta being the most, uh, uh, the most serious of all surges, uh, Mr. President, this happened sometime in uh, August and September. Sa Omicron naman, talagang nakita naman natin, mabilis lang tumaas, mabilis din bumaba, at karamihan mild. And in fact, our uh, severe critical cases are much, much lower or fewer compared to the uh, Delta, Alpha, and Beta surges. So uh, pati yung ICU natin, makikita natin, sir, ang baba, low utilization, low risk utilization rate for our uh, ICU beds and all other uh, bed capacities, uh, mababa din po, Mr. President. So, yan lang po. Uh, but can I have the other few more slides just to uh, very briefly go over them uh, para po sa kapakanan ng ating po mga kababayan, Mr. President. Sorry. Next slide. Tapusin ko lang. Ah, ito na naman. Uh, para lang pakita yung uh, prueba na yung ating po uh, mga metrics na ginagamit, yung growth in cases, as a negative 69 for the Philippines. And then our uh, average daily attack rate is 1 per 100,000 population for a minimal risk uh, classification. Pagka binangga po natin ang average daily attack rate or ADAR and the two-week growth rate, yan po, minimal. And the rest of the country, lahat, all the regions, no? minimal na po ang ating case, ang ating po uh, health systems capacity, ganun din po. Low risk, minimal to low risk. 
uh, for our total beds utilization while ICU utilization is at about 27% uh, thereabouts. No pong uh, Biernes, Mr. President, March 4, ginanap naman ang kauna-unahang Healthy Filipinas Awards for Healthy Communities. Kasama ng ating mga advocacy partners, kinalala natin ang mga proyekto ng mga local government units sa pitong larangan ng health promotion. Ito po ay ang nutrition and physical activity, environmental health, immunization, substance abuse prevention, mental health, sexual and reproductive health, at violence and injury prevention. At para sa taong ito, dinagdagan po natin ang pangwalong kategorya. Ito yung ating COVID-19 response. Sa kabuuan, meron po tayong 120 na mga entry mula sa iba't ibang LGU sa buong bansa para sa awards. At 40 na inisyatiba ng mga ito ang binigyan natin ng parangal. At taus-puso kami nagpapasalamat sa mga lokal na pamahalaan na patuloy na sumusuporta sa atin pong Healthy Pilipinas campaign. Sa inyong uh, dedikasyon, ating pong uh, napapangalagaan ang kalusugan ng bawat mamamayang Pilipino sa pamamagitan ng uh, pagtataguyod uh, ng healthy communities. And uh, finally, Mr. President, gusto ko lang pong ibahagi sa inyo. Next slide. Sa kabilang dako naman, ang ating Res Makuna kasangga ng Bida Campaign nakatanggap po ng Anvil Award mula po sa Public Relations Society of the Philippines at nagpapasalamat din po tayo sa lahat ng ating mga healthcare workers, ang mga uh, non-governmental, uh, uh, ang national government agencies, LGUs, civil society organizations, and development partners, ang mga katuwang sa pribadong sektor, sa mga volunteers, sa ating po mga kaibigan, sa media, ang ating po uh, mga taga-suporta, uh, sa kanilang uh, uh, tulong para may sakutuparan ang COVID-19 National Deployment and Vaccination Program. Bahagi po silang lahat sa natamong parangal ng DOH sa nagdaan 57th Anvil Awards. Ang, ang parangal na ito po ay hindi lamang para sa DOH, kundi para sa pagsisikap at dedikasyon ng lahat ng ating po mga partners para mabakunahan ng lahat uh, araw o gabi, Sabado o Linggo at uh, mabigyan proteksyon ang bawat pamilyang Pilipino. Marami man ang uh, hinarap at uh, haharapin pa natin malakid at pagsubok ang isang taon na uh, bakunahan kontra COVID-19 ay patunay sa lakas ng pagkakaisa ng sambayanang Pilipino. Ang tunay na tagumpay ay ang ating pong uh, sama-sama ng uh, pag-abot ng uh, ating pong uh, target population na mabakunahan and ika nga, we are only safe and protected if we are all vaccinated. So muli, sa ngala po ng Department of Health, we deeply express our thanks to everyone who has trusted and uh, is uh, and are continuously trusting the vaccines. So maraming salamat po, uh, Mr. President. Anda na po akong uh, sumagot sa inyo po. Salamat, uh, Secretary Doge. Sana you have something to say. Yes, Mr. President, uh, the figures are very impressive, but also very impressive is the number of deaths per 100,000. I think the Philippines is only around 55 deaths per 100,000, while Western Europe and the U.S. is over almost 300 deaths per 100,000 people. So we have managed the death rate very, very well. Well, uh, nagtatanong kasi ako kanina because there is no telling that one of these days another vicious virus will visit the country or the, the, the world all over. At panibagong uh, panibagong ano ito far different from what we have now. Uh, gusto ko lang malaman na what caused, I said, the numbers to go down because it would come in handy. It would be very important to remember now the, the, days, uh, the days that uh, we allotted the vaccinating uh, uh, program para for the next, uh, just put it at the back of, their, of our mind, 
para malaman. We will not be facing the problem. I mean, it would not be us who would face that problem uh, anymore. But uh, the incoming or whoever wins, dapat malaman nila ito na the good practices of uh, the Philippines. Yeah, it's quite impressive that uh, given the uh, population uh, compared to the others, and knowing how, for example, in Malaysia, in Singapore, they are quite strict, uh, Vietnam, in the observance of the law and regulation. Kaya nga ang tatanong, because in the matter of just wearing the mask, you cannot just... Uh, ignore it in Singapore nor in Malaysia because you really get arrested. Parang pagbatas di yung batas talaga dito. We, well, I appreciate the, the, the decorum adopted by our uh, law enforcement. Parang tinatapik lang na huwag mo na lang ulitin. Parang ganun. Not, it's not really important. It is important for complying for the compliance of the law. But it's uh, in the mind na uh, minsan ayaw talaga ng iba kung hindi naman kailangan uh, sending him to the police station and detaining him. Uh, medyo just for a simple violation like that. I think uh, hindi masyado maganda. So we have uh, Secretary Galvez now to the updates of uh, vaccination. Mr. President, Senator Bongo, yes, yes, uh, Bingong uh, Mel Del Dea, fellow cabinet members, mga kababayan, magandang uh, gabi po. Next slide, please. As of today, uh, 232. 0.6 million na po ang na-deliver ng various vaccines uh, sa Pilipinas. At uh, meron na po tayo na 136.8 million na po ang ating naiturok sa ating mga kababayan. 63.69 million na Pilipino ang ating fully vaccinated with the primary series. Pero, Mr. President, mababa pa rin po ang total ng boosters po natin na naibigay na humigit kumulang po ng uh, 10.5 million. Uh, sa ating pong pediatric uh, vaccination, meron po tayong almost 8.6 uh, million doses ang natakad ng gap ng primary series mm -hmm. sa edad na 12 to 17 taong gulang. At ang ating uh, uh, 5 to 11 uh, taong gulang na sector, meron po tayo almost 1 million na nabakunahan. At meron po tayo na 3.9 million na doses na dumating at may parating pa po na 6.3 million ngayong buwan. Next slide, please. Sir, dito po, uh, I will show to you yung masyadong dramatic uh, decline ng ating vaccination. And we would like to, no, to encourage everybody talagang medyo bumaba po ng talaga. Since uh, November po, nakita po natin sa November, meron po tayong more or less uh, 27 million uh, na, back na administer na doses. But uh, this, ano, this February, ang natin nga po, ating pong uh, nabakunahan lang po ay 8.7 million. So napakababa po talagang lubhang na bumaba po ang ating output uh, noong February. With the declaration of alert level 1, we have been experiencing saturation point in our vaccination centers with only the pediatric sector that dominates our vaccination site. So yung ating mga vaccination site po talagang karamihan po, bakanti po. So we will be needing uh, other strategies to gather more uh, vaccines. Next slide please. Dahil po dito, magsasagawa po ulit tayo ng isang malawakang vaccination days sa, sa this coming March 10 to 12. Ang target po natin dito ay mapalawak ang pagbo-booster sa ating eligible sectors from 18 and above. Ito pong uh, ikayatin na bumalik sa na dapat na makareceive ng second dose ay ating pong uh, palalawakin din dahil kasi karamihan po sa mga second dosers natin ay hindi po nakabalik. At ang mga remaining senior citizens and 12 to 17 years all and above, ay uh, kailangan po natin makuha po at ang target po natin na 1.8 million to 2 million ang ating mabaku mababakunahan po sa ating uh, uh, gaganapin na 3 uh, days na vaccination days. So ang na po natin, uh, ang ating pong uh, 
inclusion population is to 12 years and above. And uh, kailangan po natin talaga yung booster doses at saka yung individual with due second uh, doses. Yung remaining priority group na ito nga po, uh, itong pinuporsigin namin na Sec. Bins at saka na Sec. Duque, na makuha po po natin yung more or less 3 million at another 3 million sa remaining uh, 12 to 17. Ito po ay gaganapin po natin sa buong region, uh, Sixth region and also the, the Barn region. And it will be simultaneously uh, undertaken uh, nationwide. Next slide please. Para po ma-achieve natin ang ating target sa ating National Vaccination Day four, number 4, tayo po ay muling nakipag-unayan sa Philippine Medical Association and other medical professionals para makilahok at mag-mobilize this coming March 12. We will also involve uh, the pharmacies and clinics and we will expand more the numbers of uh, those who are volunteering. We will also direct all government agencies and private sector to vaccinate their government employees and economic frontliners para po ito sa boosters at saka po po yung ating mga yung tawag na mga hindi pa po nakababakunahan. We will also launch uh, with the DOLE, uh, yung tinatawag po na job fair in the job sites. And also, all the LGUs and DOH regional offices and local health centers to do the house-to-house -house vaccination. At nagkaroon na po tayo ng uh, series of meetings at saka mga trainings para po ibababa po natin from the LGU vaccination site to the different uh, barangay uh, health centers and other, uh, tinatawag nating other uh, 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 yung ating mga tawag na mga volunteers na pwede pong magbahay-bahay. We also ask DepEd and CHED to continue their aggressive vaccination through Box to School program. Ito po ay nakita po natin na talagang nire-recommend po ni Secretary Calchua na talagang magkaroon na po tayo ng Box to School at yung po ang pinakaano po namin, na recommend po namin na ang DepEd at saka CHED ay magkaroon po na tinatawag na Box to School na program. And lastly, we requested DTI and other big establishment to give more incentives to those people with boosters. And lastly, uh, we will again encourage our government agencies, our T3 partners, our private sector, LGUs, itong sa mga eco zones, ang ating AP and PNP to participate in our massive vaccination day on March 10 to 12. Magpa-booster na po tayo. That's all, Mr. President, at uh, mabuhay po tayong lahat. Salamat po, uh, Secretary Galvez. Now it's the, the turn of Secretary Anyo. Magandang kapit po, uh, Mr. President, uh, Executive Secretary Salvador Nigel Deya, Senator Bongo, uh, fellow public servants, mga kababayan, magandang gabi. Unang-una po, ang aking iuulat, ay ang ating ginagawang granular lockdown nationwide under alert level 1 at alert level 2. Sa patuloy po na pagbaba ng kaso at sa pagpapatupad ng alert level 1 sa PP3 LGUs, nakita po natin na lalong buwaba din ang mga areas under granular lockdown. Nakita po na siyam na city or municipality o binubuo ng 24 na barangays lamang ang nagpapatupad ng uh, granular lockdown. At ito po ay uh, 37. Nakita po natin na ang Metro Manila, ang may pinakbarami, 31, at dalawa naman sa NCR. I mean, dalawa po sa NCR, 31 po sa CAR, at uh, apat sa Region 1. All the rest ay wala na po. So ito ay nakakapekto sa 37 households at 47 individuals. In-expect po natin na lalo pang bababa yung mga areas na ito. At uh, nagkaroon po tayo ng assessment sa pagpapatupad ng Alert Level 1. Unang-una po, nagkaroon tayo ng pulong sa mga NCR mirrors kagabi. At uh, napag-alaman po natin na uh, maganda po ang ating assessment sa uh, first week ng implementation ng ating Alert Level 1. Patuloy pa rin bumababa ang mga numero ng cases. Pero... Ang bunga naman ito ay tumaas ang ating mobility, kaya unti-unti namang naramdaman ang pagiging, mas nagiging traffic na po sa mga areas na to At uh, nakita rin po namin na uh, binabantay natin yung mga focus crimes. Medyo tumaas ang index crime, particularly physical injuries at saka theft. 
At ito ay uh, napansin natin sa mga business establishment na malalapit sa malls. Kaya naman mas marami pang uh, pulis ang ating i-deploy bilang uh, pang paghahanda at uh, maging deterrent sa mga criminals. At nagsasagawa na rin po tayo ng paghahanda para sa fourth National Vaccination Days. So, pinulong na rin natin ang mga LGU, sa mga governors, ang mga mayors at ang barangay captains. Kaya ready-ready na po tayo rito para mas lalo pang madagdagan ang ating uh, mabakunahan. Lalo-lalo na ang mga natitirang seniors, ang mga uh, kailangang mabigyan ng boosters, at pati po ang mga bata, particularly ang uh, 17, year, 17 years old and below. Next slide, please. Dito naman po, uh, Mr. President, makikita natin yung pagpapatupad ng mga community health protocols. Ang uh, ating uh, mga violations sa uh, hindi pagsusot ng mask ay bumaba ng 25.36%. So, ibig sabihin po ay talagang sumusunod naman ang ating mga kababayan. Medyo tumaas lang ang uh, conduct ng mask gathering pero bumaba din naman ang uh, no physical distancing ng 29%. 0.14%. Uh, patuloy po nating ipapatupad ang minimum public health standard kasama ang LGUs at ang mga law enforcement para siguradong mabantayan natin na wala nang magkakaroong spike pa sa susunod ng mga araw. Next slide. At ito naman sa aking hulang, huling ulat, uh, Mr. President. Ito po yung ating kinakandak ng mga anti-illegal drug operations during the pandemic. Makita po natin na nakapagsagawa tayo ng 916 anti-illegal drug operations. Nakapag-aresto tayo ng mga 1,307 na violators. Meron pong apa, uh, 76 na nag-surrender at isa naman ang nasawi sa ating mga police operations. Pero gusto pong uh, ipakita, Mr. President, ay ang biglang paglaki ng ating mga nasamsam na mga illegal drugs. Ito pa yung umabot sa 424,747,925 pesos. Almost kalahating billion po. Ikumpara natin po last week na ito ay 159 million lang. So ito po ay maaaring bunga na din ng pagluluwag natin na karoon ng mobility, kumilo sa mga tao at pwedeng samantalahin po ng mga illegal drug traders. Lalo pa na yung paigtingin ng ating mga operation para siguradong hindi mapagsamantalahan ng mga illegal drug operators ang ating pagbaba ng kaso at pagluluwag sa alert level 1. Yan lamang po, Mr. President. Maraming salamat po. Well, anyway, Art, uh, Secretary Tugade, uh, medyo pa-relax ka dyan. Uh, I, I, I would like to remind you of the projects that uh, I would like to be also participating uh, para makita ng tao yung ano mo yung nagawa mo para sa Pilipinas uh, uh, if you have the time kindly uh, get me your uh, uh, ito yung schedule mo para makasama ako I'd be happy to join you uh, sa nagawa mo para sa bayan well uh, anyway uh, Salamat po, Mr. President. Uh, sige. sige. Uh, narinig, narinig po ba ako? Uh, clear. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor President. Una po, yung uh, rekomendasyon ng DOTR kasama po sa report na naihayag ni uh, Secretary Carl kanina. Uh. Ito po yung tatlong bahagi na kung saan sinasabi namin i-release na, i na po yung fuel subsidy na nagkakahalaga ng 2.5 billion. Ito po ang isang proyektong katuwang at kasama namin ang Department of Energy at Department of Budget. Nakikiusap din ho kami na yung service contracting ay i-release na ho yung pondo na nagkakahalaga sa 7 million na nakakapaloob ho sa uh, budget ng 2022. Ito ho ay uh, provided na sa budget, eh kung marirelease ito, ito ay magbubunga ng tinatawag natin na libreng sakay. Sabihin ko lang ho at this time, yung libreng sakay po last year, ang nakinabang ho dyan, 100, 
uh, 100,000 mga drivers at mga mga operator. Pero ang malaga ho dyan, ang nakinabang na ridership is 7.2 million. Ang ibig sabihin, uh, talagang pangmalawakan ng pakinabang na ito. Uh, ito ho ay napaloob sa report ni Secretary Carl kanina. Doon ho sa mga project, maraming salamat po Mr. President. Uh, talaga hong inaasahan ng ating mga kababayan ang iyong participation upang sa ganyan malaman at malaman nila yung mga ginagawa ng iyong administrasyon. Tatlong proyekto ho ang aking uh, uh, i-re-remind ho sana kung pwede sumama kayo. Una po, yung MRT3 inauguration. Ito ho, kung pwede nating gawin ho ito, natapos na ho yung rehabilitation, full rehabilitation ng MRT3. Na kung saan, talagang mapapalakas na ho natin yung tinatawag na capacity. Uh, pwede na, na nating abutin from 200,000, pwede nating abutin 400,000 hanggang 600,000 per day. Ito ho, dati ho, nung nagumpisa kayo, uh, puro aberya ang inabot natin. Uh, katakot-takot na insulto ang inabot ko dyan. Pero itong mga nakaraan, even sa pan- pandemya, wala hong glitches. Kaya uh, kung makakasama po kayo sa inauguration at acceptance ng MRT3 full rehabilitation completion, mahag- maganda po yan. Pangalawa ho, yung sinabi ko noong nakarang meeting, ito ho yung kaakibat ng Bicol Express na kung saan handa na po yung trend gumalaw from uh, Lucena to San Pablo. Ito ho, matagal na nabinbin ang trend dyan, limang taon. Ito ay pwede na nating uh, uh, gawin ho yan. Uh, ito ho, kadugtong ito ng Bicol Express. Imagine, meron na ho tayo sa Bicol ng Bicol International Airport. Meron ka pang Bicol Express sa release. Hindi ho masasabi ng ating mga kaibigan, kababayan sa Bicol na sila'y pinabayaan. Mas bali, binigyan ho sila ng atensyon. Meron ho mga pwertong kailangan nating inaugurate. Nabanggit ko ho yung sa Ilocos Norte na handa nang inaugurate ito. Ito ho yung cruise vessels. Meron din ho yung mga pwerto sa Samar, sa Eastern Samar. Nakikipag-ugnayan ho ako sa OPI nang sa ganun, ma-reconcile ho yung mga schedule. Tama ho kayo, Mr. Mayor. Tama lang, malaman ng ating mga kababayan yung mga ginagawa sa Riles, sa Kalsada, sa Aviation, sa Kasamari Time. Yun lang po, Mr. President. Yung pag-inaugurate mo doon sa Samar, uh, Art, pag mo kalimutan na uh, imbitahin niyo mga NPA. Oh, wala eh, gina- oh, wala akong ginawa kung mag-ambos na mag-ambos sa sundalo ko. Uh, yayain mo na lang para uh, ano ako na ang nagyaya. Magkita na lang tayo doon. Walang hulihan. We'll, kasali kay lahat pati sa kainan. We'll comply, Mayor. We'll oh. comply. Uh, one day ano uh, respite from fighting. Well, wala na ginawa tong hindi mag ay, summer, ang ramay pa rin. Ah, alam niyo ho, Mr. President, let's walk memory lane. Yung sa completion ng Bicol International Airport, dalawang sabotahe inabot ko dyan, dalawang sunog. Ah, eh, pero natapos naman natin. Ay, ay, ayun nga, sa bagay, uh, well, basta nalaman ng bayan na uh, ginagawa namin lahat ang makakaya namin gawin. Yun lang. Uh, hindi naman kami sabihin na gagawain namin lahat. Basta yung hanggang kaya lang namin sa mga otak sa mga tao dito na nakikita ninyo. So, wala namang ano, I, I cannot invite you nandyan sa panel. Uh, wala, kung wala kayong pagkain, pasensya na kayo. Dapat <laughs> Nag-sandwich, sandwich na kayo. Kasi kami, kakain kami dito. Puchero. Ang kagaya, ano, na, kagaya ng FDA, kakain na rin ako. Sige. Uh, mga kababayan ko, hanggang dito lang muna. Hindi na ako mag ano. Uh, I have many things to really uh, to convey to you. But uh, 
pahuli na natin pati itong gera ng between Russia and uh, Ukraine. Uh, hindi namin ito sinasabi kung ano, not so that uh, hindi maalarma yung tao. Pero pinakadelikado ito ngayong nangyayari. Kasi pag may nagkamali dito, pag uh, nabitawan yung mga nuclear warheads, uh, problema talaga. Problema na. At saka baski ngayong, hang, ngayon nag-umpisa na tayo. Remember, oil. Oil is, alam mo, aywan ko kung paano ginawa ang Diyos ng itong mundo. Kasi yung mga kapitbahay natin, Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, may mga oil sila. Tayo, mayroon pa, kukunti lang, not enough even to, to, to serve uh, a region o three, four regions. Ano. Ang mayroon tayo, gas. Uh, pero yan ang bantayan natin because there is a Uh, potential uh, trouble there regarding how we would handle it. Pero ang sinasabi ko lang at sabihin ko na mabuti pa. Uh, marami kasi yung pumapasok dyan na mga kontratista. Uh, hindi ko alam kung sino yung gustong umagaw o sino yung gustong papalit. Pero merong haka-haka na mayroong bagong kumpanya na sila na mag-takeover kasi nandiyan na. Uh, ano, alam mo, pinaalaala sa akin, hindi ko lang sabihin kung sino, uh, from China, sabi niya, di ba may usapan tayo na uh, joint uh, development yung sa Recto sa sa Recto Bank. Eh, uh, may bagong mga istorya na may papalit na ganun. Alam mo, uh, I can only talk for this uh, time that we are here. Administrasyon ko. Bilungan ako ng ano na huwag ganun. Yung yung original contracts natin, sundin natin. Ngayon, nasabi, magpadala ng sundalo. Nasabi, na, wala, nasabi ko, wala man, wala man kami sinabi yung padala sundalo. Nasabi niya, eh, just in case, magpadala kayo ng sundalo, magpadala rin kami ng sundalo. So, alam mo, yan ang iniiwasan ko noon pa eh. Tapos, magkagaira tuloy tayo dito, nandoon sa Ukraine, nandyan yung Taiwan, gustong agawin uli ng China, tapos dito, mag, so many flash points, maraming lugar na may potok. We do not need it. Hindi natin kailangan makipag-away dyan. Sundin lang nila, sundin lang ninyo, kung ano yung pinag-usapan noon. Honor yan eh. It's a matter of honor. We gave our consensual uh, talks. Tapos may, may written agreement. Pag iba, iniba yan, delikado. So, hindi na mangyari sa akin yan kasi ayaw ko. Ayaw kong ibahin. Kasi yun ang pinag-usapan namin sa panahon. Yun lang, uh, just, just to remind everybody to stay cool, to chill ka lang. It's not the, it, maybe it's not our, it's not our, in our generation na uh, masusurve natin itong problema sa China. Uh, I don't know what, hold, what the future holds, but uh, I said at this time, uh, relax lang tayo. That's my advice. Para sa lahat, uh, irrespective of now or tomorrow, uh, wag lang natin na uh, do ang ika do not tempt the gods and look for trouble that we cannot maybe.
handle. Uh, oh, mahirapan tayo. Salamat uh, sa inyong lahat.